little recorded video and it's going to be nurturing tips for midlife. I'm recording, recording it on a screen recorder but I thought I would just put it here just in case anybody wanted to follow along. So nurturing tips for midlife. Anyone with ovaries are going to go through menopause and it's best to see it as a life transition, something not to be dreaded but to be embraced. Sure there's some side effects like hot flashes and mood swings, hormonal changes, changes in our menstruation which are not so pleasant but maybe we should embrace it as an opportunity to mentor others, share our wisdom we've collected over our lifetime and to have new adventures. Technically, menopause is only one day in a woman's life. It's exactly the point where she hasn't had a period for 12 months. But we usually arrive at that between the ages of 45 to 55. I'm 40, so I'm still not there yet, but I know it's coming. <laughs> And we can have pre-menopausal symptoms for up to 10 years. During this time, our menstrual cycle changes. They may become shorter, longer, heavier, more irregular. Our emotions may go up and down. And our estrogen levels are going down. The body's producing less estrogen. We may have trouble sleeping also. I also, when I was preparing for this, I came across a really interesting article that in the UK, Channel 4, which is a TV network, has done the first policy of its kind to support women going through the menopause. This is pretty impressive. It's uh, creating a supportive environment, giving a cool place for people to work, um, and just generally being more supportive and understanding about it. So I looked and found some great quotes because oftentimes when we approach any transition, be that puberty earlier in our life or maybe menopause, the mindset we have towards it is very powerful. Here are a few quotes. I see menopause as the start of the next fabulous phase of life as a woman. Now is the time to tune in to our bodies and embrace this new chapter. If anything, I feel more myself and love my body more at 58 years of age than ever before. That's the actress Kim Cattrall. If you deal with it in a healthy fashion, then I think you come out the other side a better person. I've got more energy than I ever had in my early 50s before the menopause. Julia Walters, another actress. Here's a couple more. Many people I've talked to see the menopause as an ending, but I've discovered this is the moment to reinvent yourself after years of focusing on the needs of everyone else. It's your opportunity to get clear about what really matters to you and then to pursue that with all your energy, time and talent over Winfrey. I'm going to introduce you to somebody I stumbled across after listening to a podcast called The Outdoors Fix. She's called Jo Mosley and the link is, if you look up The Outdoors Fix, I've shared this here before and it's also on the latest blog post I've done at anchornutrition.com. The link is there. It's midlife adventuring and paddleboarding coast to coast and her site is called Healthy and Happy at 50. And I've also got a little article I've copied later in this presentation from her. I just think she's amazing. This is what she wrote. And because I'm not there yet, I want to draw from the collective wisdom of women who have been here. And if you're listening or you listen to this later, please share what you've learned too, because I learn so much more from others. Above all, remember that life is so short and so precious. In our 40s and 50s, I'm sure we all have friends who are unwell, those we have lost too soon, far too soon. I'm here, I'm healthy. I want to make the most of the days ahead. I spent years waiting for my body to be slim enough for the last 10 pounds to do the things I wanted to do. I don't want to wait any longer. This is not the stuff of transformation pictures, no before or after triumph, no diets, cleanses or programs, just tiny moments of accepting, 
loving, nourishing myself as I am. Dimple thighs, curvy tummy over the years. Am I 100% body confident every day? No, absolutely not. But then my confidence in my work and being a mom ebbs and flows too. So why would I expect this to be any different? Ups and downs, forwards and backwards. From now on, I'm going to wear what will enhance my joy and the adventure I have to have on the beach. Not to play anybody else's agenda of what's deemed appropriate, brave or required to prove myself. Sorry, my son just walked in. One day a wetsuit, another leggings and a rash top, a swimsuit or a woolly hat and scarf as I feel fit. My adventure, my body, my choice. I finally realised that the time is now. There are waves to be ridden. Shorelines to clean, cartwheels to enjoy. Today on the beach, just as I am, my body and I, friends at last. Dimpled thighs, joyful heart, peaceful soul. Joe Mosley, check her out. So, moving on to nutrition. I wanted to set the scene so that you could think about this as a, an exciting new adventure, not the doom and gloom and the central weight gain that the media paints it out to be. It doesn't have to be seen that way. It's important to note that after menopause has occurred, women have increased calcium requirements because of the decreased levels of estrogen during the first eight years after menopause. This can lead to a potential loss of bone and risk of osteoporosis. As we get older, we also lose muscle mass. Hey guys, can you turn the tap off and be quiet? I'm recording a presentation, please. Just please, thank you. Sorry about that. We also lose muscle. This is also known as sarcopenia. You're not defined by a number of a scale though. And the scales may change during this transition the same way they did when we went through puberty. Some call this the second puberty. But if you start dieting, counting calories and obsessed with the number on a scale, it may make you consumed by it and anxious. The key to this transition in your life is to know that you are worthy, you are priceless, and to focus on self-care and having fun. So, a few tips from a nutrition and self-care point of view, knowing those factors, is to be gentle with yourself and the process to know that you are worthy and wise. Check out the book, Intuitive Eating, very powerful and also I love the mindful eating workbook. These practices can be life-changing. Find joyful movement including strength training to protect against the loss of muscle as we age. So strength training could be doing exercise with weights. I particularly love using a kettlebell. There's lots of great online workouts. It could be doing gardening, uh, shoveling soil, moving mulch, so something to keep your muscle mass up. That's a really good thing to do during this stage. Try to make sure you have adequate calcium in your diet. Uh, so again, dairy, you know, yogurt, cheese, uh, milk, all plant-based alternatives, such as rice milk, uh, soy milk, uh, leafy greens, legumes, to help to protect our bones and decrease the risk of osteoporosis as we age. Ensure protein at each meal. That's to support um, muscle synthesis. And like I mentioned, as we go through um, perimenopause and menopause, there is a risk of us losing muscle mass. So ensuring good protein intake and strength training, that will help to decrease that risk. Get plenty of vitamin D get outside in the sunshine. Many physicians now test this routinely. So you could ask for your vitamin D that levels to be checked and take a supplement if it's on the low side. Now you'll always hear me mentioning this, but I think it's vital when it comes to self care. You need to find tools to manage stress. And we all need that now as what we're going through collectively is super hard. So that could be seeing a therapist. Many of them have online appointments right now. Journaling, finding joyful movement. I actually interacted with the lady I mentioned because I just love her, Jo Mosley. And she said she does embrace health at every size. The moment she took the focus off her weight 
and just did activities for the pure joy of it was life changing. So really focus on things that light you up. It could be yoga, going for a walk, it could be dancing, it could be anything, but something you enjoy. I love the concept of forest bathing, bathing and meditation in nature. Hi, Martha. So simply, once every day if you can, or a few times every day, step outside. Notice the birds singing. See a sunset or a sunrise. Notice the bees, butterflies, and try to tune into nature. It's incredibly healing and calming. So maybe check out, there's a really good book, Shirin Yaku, Forest Bathing. That's another good book. And I think that is all that I have for you. I put some references here. I found some really nice articles in like the New York Times and NPR, very upbeat articles. There's a really great registered dietitian called Erica Leon. And her website is fantastic. She has a lot of experience with this um, menopausal issues. And she has a free download. Um, and I stumbled across this magnificent midlife podcast too. So support one another too. We're all in it together. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>